We have learned about the point plotting method to sketch the graph for a function, which is a basic reliable method, but it could be tedious and time consuming. In this lecture, we will learn how to quickly sketch a function by transforming the graph of a known function. Let's look at this simple example. We are already very familiar with the graph of the squaring function, but just as a review, if we use the point plotting method to sketch it, we will pick several independent variable values x and calculate the corresponding function values fx, use these ordered pairs of numbers as coordinates, we plot the solution points on the Cartesian plane and sketch a smooth curve, and that's the graph for this f function. Now, if we want to sketch a new function, which equals to x squared plus 2, and we notice how it is related to the given f function, it is simply fx plus 2. Therefore, if we want to use the point plotting method again to sketch the g function, then we calculate the function value. But all we need to do is to add 2 to the f function values. And when we plot the new solution points, we just need to move all the existing solution points up by 2 units. And this is a graph for the gx function. And as you can see, it is simply the graph of the f function shifted upward by two units. So from the previous two exercise problems, hopefully you have got an idea of the shiftings. But here's a summary. So based on this given graph of the fx function, if we want to sketch a new function, gx, which equals to fx plus c, here c is a positive real number, then we transform the existing fx graph vertically up by c units and then we get the g function we want to sketch. And if we want to sketch a function hx that equals to fx minus c, again, c is a positive real number, then we transform the existing fx function vertically down by c units and get the new function h function graph. So pay attention here. If you recall, we said that x is the input of the function and fx is the output. And as you can see, these changes here are applied to the output, and that indicates vertical changes on the graph. Again, for the given f function graph, if we want to sketch a g function that equals to f, but within the parentheses, x plus c. Again, c is a positive real number. Now we need to shift the f function graph to the left by c units and get the new graph of g function. And lastly, if we want to sketch an h function that equals to f within the parentheses x minus c, c again a positive real number, then we need to shift the f function to the right by c units and get the new function h function graph. Here, as you can see, these changes are inside the parentheses, and they are changes applied to the input, and therefore indicating horizontal changes on the graph. Let's look at another type of transformation, reflections. Again, based on the given graph of f function, if we wish to sketch the graph of gx, which equals to negative fx, Again, notice how this is the change to the output of the function. So you should know now that indicates some kind of vertical changes. And that is the vertical reflection about the x-axis. And based on this f function, if we want to sketch gx equals to f negative x, notice how the negative sign is inside the parentheses which means that there's a change to the input, therefore indicating horizontal change on the graph. And that's a horizontal reflection about the y-axis. 
And by the way, both shifting and reflections are known as rigid transformations because as you can see, the graph has been moved about or flipped over, but the overall shape and ratio are not changed. Let's look at an example. We know the graph for the squared root function, fx, and we need to use it to sketch a new function g that is negative square root of x plus 3 and then minus 2. If you wish to, we can rewrite this function as an expression of fx. So gx equals to negative f within the parenthesis x plus 3 minus 2. So here, the parentheses still have the higher priority of operation. So first step, this indicates a horizontal shift to the left by 3 units. And next, the negative sign here indicates vertical reflection, reflection about the x-axis. And lastly, this minus 2 indicates a vertical shift downward by 2 units. And that completes our graph for the g function. If you get confused, or if you want to double check, it's quite simple. Just calculate one or two solution points. For example, the g function evaluated at x equals to negative 3 is negative 2, indicating negative 3, negative 2 must be a point on the graph. And indeed, it is a point on the graph. Now let's look at another type of transformation, stretching and shrinking. From this given fx function, if we wish to graph gx equals to a coefficient c multiplied by fx, depending on the value of c, if c is between 0 and 1, for example 0 0.5, 1 third, etc., then that indicates a vertical shrink, and the graph looks like this. Or if c is above 1, that indicates a vertical stretching, and the graph looks like this. Notice that all these three graphs have the same x-intercepts, because this change is applied to the output again. Therefore, there are only vertical changes, no change horizontally. And based on this graph of the given f function, if we need to sketch gx that equals to f within the parentheses c times x, then that indicates horizontal changes. If c is between 0 and 1, that is horizontal stretch, and the graph looks like this. And if c is bigger than 1, that is horizontal shrink, and the graph looks like this. Notice how the graphs all have the same y-intercept, because again, changes are only applied to the input, so there is no vertical change. This type of transformation involving stretching or shrinking are called non-rigid transformation, because the ratio of the graphs have been changed.